I want to talk about one of the most misused, misunderstood Bible verses in the entire Bible. It simply says, judge not, period. It's what a lot of people put right there, but it doesn't have a period. It continues and gives an explanation for several verses by our Lord. Let me tell you first what it does not mean. It does not mean that you cannot identify misconduct or things that are wrong. If that were the case, if that were the interpretation of it, we could not have a legal system, we could not have a judicial system, we could not have law enforcement. The most heinous crimes could be committed by anyone without any consequences of, at all, because it would be improper to bring any kind of judgment. And if you can't judge evil, by the way, you couldn't judge good. There'd be no more telling your kids or grandkids, good job, good as compared to what? Are you judging somebody else who doesn't do it as well as I do? You couldn't encourage, you couldn't reward honesty, integrity, uh, perseverance, self-discipline. Those things would be absolutely valueless. You couldn't have a favorite song, you couldn't have a favorite color, a favorite pair of shoes, a favorite football team, and so on and so on. Uh, as a matter of fact, without judgment, you could not forgive, simply because forgiveness implies that there has been an offense against you. And so you forgive that person for that. I want you to know that Jesus judged. I want you to know that Paul judged. He wrote to the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, thereabout, and he said, even though I'm not with you, not being with you, yet I've judged. I've judged that man who was in question in the Corinthian church. Then why is this such a common Bible verse uh, to be misused? Well, it's a smoke screen, it's a, it's a barrier, it's a block. It's throwing your card down on the poker table saying, this game is over, we can't discuss it anymore. And uh, it's used as an escape mechanism by most people. Well, the truth is, if you want to play that card, that game, if you're going to judge me of judging you, well, then I'm going to have to judge you of judging you for judging me. And uh, it's sort of like holding two mirrors up in front of each other. There's just uh, the results are um, ad infinitum. They go on and on and on. And there's you judge me for judging you because you judged uh, me that I was judging you because you judged me. And there's no end to that kind of stuff. So let's get right to the crux of it. What does it actually mean? And first thing I want to say is that a text without context is a pretext. I'll say it again. Any text without context is a pretext. This has a pretext, a or this has a context to it. And Jesus was speaking in verse 5 of, of uh, Matthew. We understand he says, thou hypocrite. He's speaking to hypocrites. He's speaking to people who have a huge problem in their own life, but yet they want to correct other people. It's not that there's anything wrong with judgment. It's that Start with yourself first. Make sure that you are in a position to judge. If you have something in your eye, which may be the same size, but because it's your eye, guess what? It's going to be huge. I mean, something the same size in your eye, right up that close, just by perspective, is going to give you a perspective that's going to consume you. That's why people who see themselves as victims judge everything in a certain way. People who see themselves as an elitist, see them, they see everything else through their own perspective. People who are compassionate, they have a different perspective than people who are heartless. It happens all the time. Check out the splinter or the beam, the huge monster in your own eye, and then here's the kicker. You're supposed to judge. Why? So that you can go to your brother and get the speck out of his eye. In other words, judgment is required, expected, and a wonderful Christian attribute to have in your life if you have it benevolently. If you are really wanting to help people get the speck out of their eye, get it out of your own eye first. So that is the proper context, but remember this, text out of context is a pretext.